So let's go. Um, <clears throat> so today I will talk about how, how and why learning Python in 2022. My name is Jean-François Thion. So people usually call me Jeff because in China this is uh, hard to pronounce actually this name. And uh, here we go. Let's go. So just a bit about myself. I'm, um, I've been doing <laughs> software development for more than 13 years in a NASDAQ 100 software company. And I've been in China for more than uh, 17 years. I've been Py I've been doing Python coding for around nine years or something, and teaching Python for more than five years, <clears throat> because it is something actually I'm uh, really passionate about, like sharing and teaching. And I recently joined Unpack AI and became a senior mentor. And also I'm in charge. I mean, not in charge. I mean, the core uh, dev development team of the Python libraries of NPAKI. So, why uh, Python? So, <clears throat> oh, oops, sorry. So, Python has been actually a very hot language in the last few years. So, this is um, like uh, actually. This is a survey done by Stack Overflow, which is a leading website for the developers. And every year they do a survey of what um, of different statistics about language and and uh, framework and technologies used by developers. And in the last five years, Python have been the most wanted language among all the people who answered this survey. And it's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. answered. Uh, JavaScript actually have been also very popular, although it decreased uh, last year. So this is like 2020. 2021 it went a bit down, and language like REST have been uh, have been up a bit for information. And uh, language like C# -sharp is actually relatively low. This is another graph also by uh, Stack Overflow, based on the number of questions asked by people on the website, and we can see that. In the last um, what seven years, Python has really rocketed, skyrockets, and now it's this web of other language, including mm -hmm. uh, JavaScript in Orange. <clears throat> so why actually why this Python is actually so popular these days? So the first reason is around yeah these last years we have like um, a boom of machine learning, data science. And also Python is very useful in the scientific community. So for example, <clears throat> we have, there is a lot of um, framework where you can do, for example, astronomy. And recently with uh, development, with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, we can actually interact or get data from the telescope and do some uh, very advanced astronomy among like the open source community. And it's also, so in the three keywords, it's very easy to use. It's very versatile and it's, it's super powerful. While, so like the three combined make it um, ideal choice, especially if you start uh, programming because the syntax is relatively easy. The code is uh, also easy to read. So like the concept like uh, classes, which can be difficult in other language is relatively easy in, uh, in Python. And it's make it give a small learning curve for this language. For the versatility, it's uh, the, the type of application you can use is is uh, tremendous, tremendous. So you can use for yeah, data science, machine learning, um, <clears throat> also astronomy, scientific com computation. Um, you can use for web development, scripts, and it can also supports you can work actually on many many platforms so of course uh, linux mac uh, windows but also like it can actually work on my uh, nas actually I have a, like you know like hard drive which is connected to my network and you can even work there is some version for um for actually intelligent closing so before we had a student a student of our boot camp was studying python to to actually coding some uh, intelligent close so it's, it's very, uh, yeah, type of, of usage is is, is uh, huge. And finally, it's a very powerful language. So you have like so many libraries to do whatever you want to do. And 
uh, something also interesting it's you can use you can interact with other language so for example you have like c language um like c java language where like very popular actually you can call call uh, python directly from from it and you can use python to to use directly code from uh, from c language for example and also it can all this combined actually make it uh, very suitable for integrating into enterprise flows. You can actually have some scripts who connect to uh, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, even like uh, Photoshop also, um, and, and software like Photoshop, like you have GIMP, the open source version. So many language actually have some, uh, many programs, sorry, many software actually have some, some way to, uh, to develop some scripts to interact with them and, and enhance actually the experience for the user. So now that uh, we know that Python actually is a very, let's say, us very useful uh, language for your back for your um, like a Swiss knife, army knife for professional work. So how how to learn it? So in my opinion, there are three different ways of learning uh, a language and Python in particular. So you have like self-study. You have something. So you also another way is to to learn through a teacher. And the third one, which is um, something a bit uh, different, it's community-based learning. And I will explain a little bit later what I mean by that. So self-study, <clears throat> as you know, so there is a many uh, MOOC available on, on internet. So like Coursera, you have Udemy, Udacity, edX, or website like DataQuest, or also MIT is providing some great Python courses. You have many books, um, so I just picked two. Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, which is very uh, very well written, very interesting. And you have actually a free copy, you can get a free copy online. And uh, Head First Python, uh, Head First on Python, I think, which is very interesting approach to help you understand better um, like concepts, language, and, and different things. Some other ways, so we have some a lot of videos on YouTube, which are very interesting. Some of them are organized more like a courses. Some are more like um, solving different challenge, different mini projects that take you through different concepts and actually enhance your, uh, your Python skills. And the last method is more like tutorials or like courses taking you from, from scratch and step by step. And this is actually how I learned Python, yeah, like many years ago. Also, although I had actually a very strong programming language, uh, programming background, actually, uh, I I found something which is like from scratch, assuming zero knowledge in uh, in programming. And so within one day, I was able just to write uh, my first program that was used immediately, actually, at work for some um, actually doing some testing. So like, actually, I developed a tool for for our software development. Um, the pro, of course, of the self-study and maybe one of the most reasons that people choose this is that it's mostly free. Uh, for most of the MOOC are free. Some uh, you need to just pay some, some premium. It's also time flexible so because you can adapt to your uh, schedule when you're available. And if one week you are a bit more busy, you can just uh, slow down a little bit. So it's matching your speed and your needs. On the other hand, because because of this, actually you are alone, it's very hard to maintain the motivation. So maybe a lot of people will drop while doing a self-study. And to start with, actually, the choice is very large. So which one to pick, which book to pick, or which MOOC, or shall you do a mix, or so finding the suitable solution might not be as easy as it seems. <clears throat> yeah, and actually the completion rate of uh, self-study courses of MOOCs is very, very low, what, what Jeff mentioned. It's actually around 9%. So 91% uh, of people will drop out. And uh, I, for me, I've been actually like doing um, online events and offline events uh, for, for community learning for quite a long time, but sometimes I need to kind of learn new skill. 
but then I cannot also maintain myself for a very long learning. For example, I'm very passionate about blockchain. I start learning blockchain, but I couldn't follow up. I had to drop uh, drop out on the fourth hour of watching the video lecture because like there is no engagement, though the content itself is just really amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Aydar. Yeah, very great feedback. So I think self-study is more suitable for people with programming backgrounds because they already have the, um, the basic knowledge. They have the concept, so it's actually much easier to just um, learn the, the differences for a language. Or like people with a very strong will or immediate needs. So like if you will apply actually your, your knowledge, it actually will motivate you to finish these uh, courses and it will, uh, overall it will help you to, to in your quest. And also, another way is more so you, more like a um, classic way. So you have a teacher teaching you, um, could be online or offline. So you could have starting from the classes or university. Uh, you could have also some, some boot camps, some uh, corporate trainings, <clears throat> which are relatively expensive, if not very expensive actually, or also some equivalent to like open training. So like some uh, training center is organizing some Python training and many people can, uh, can join this. So of course, uh, especially for, um, for, for like the corporate training that can be quite expensive and it might be actually easy to forget some of the knowledge if you don't apply it. So I remember we did in, uh, so in my company, we did many, many trainings on, on different topics and just just for actually the sake of we had like some budget we say okay it would be good if some people had some knowledge of this so we just uh, purchase a, a training for all the, the whole office and just after three months or something like maybe the retention rate is, is very low and maybe 10 people just remember stuff from this training but sometimes it can be quite a waste um, also, some of the trainings might lack practice. Again, especially for corporate trainings because it's quite expensive. You, you sometimes you want to pack as much as possible in this training. Um, you don't put, yeah, put enough practice, and actually this might make this um, acquisition of knowledge actually useless because you won't remember it. On the plus side, it's usually actually why you have this kind of training is to acquire some knowledge. Uh, quite fast, so it's more like a, a shot to boost. And the teacher is, like unlike the, the self-training, a teacher can help you actually to solve your problems you have in your, uh, in your quest of, of learning the language. And so you can be guided to get the, the basic concepts of programming. So <clears throat> I think it could be suitable for um, yeah, people who could just need a, a boost of the skills right now. Or like for example, there's some projects and you have some budget for that. And yeah, there's something actually I wanted to say on the previous slides. So why I've put like this kind of boot camps focusing on content. It's um, some actually, some boot camps are actually more about, yeah, teaching you, teaching you things rather than building the community. So uh, what actually one of our students from NPAC AI <clears throat> attending some uh, yeah, Python boot camp, it was like four or five weeks and there were like around 10 people and after these five weeks it's barely knew any of the of the classmates actually of the boot camp so it's actually quite a pity that after uh, yeah five weeks learning with with some other people you you don't know them because i think you're missing a like very important part which is like emotional and um and uh, and human yeah human touch human contact yeah, I think uh, the peer-to-peer -peer pressure and the opportunity to know more your your classmates to kind of like also to go through the some challenges uh, working on the on the assignments uh, together is one of the way to kind of know each other very well and kind of like build this 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 bind the connection right and then like mm. what we also see if you actually can acquire the students with different backgrounds in corporates, in HR, in finance, right, in software, put them together and learn some stuff together. I think like there is also the opportunity to learn uh, 
different domains, right, and kind of relate to, to what's going on in the rest of the world and kind of like make sense how is your progress and what's going, uh, what's going on in other industries and how like one tool, let's say Python or blockchain or AI, help you like, you know, see how impactful uh, this skill is across many, many industries. It's very, it's very useful. Thanks, Jeff, for that. Hmm. We'll bring it. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at these two, two methods, actually, we need, we need to find a way to balance the, the flexibility. So like when you do self-study, you can choose your own pace, your own content, how deep you want to go, which usually you don't have in a, like, for example, a corporate training because it's just a teacher has actually set up the, the content. Uh, also balance the cost and balance the, the fact that actually you can get help when you need it. So in my opinion, um, the community, so what's called community-based learning can, uh, can be a solution. So if you look at the most two famous websites for developers, which are Stack Overflow and uh, GitHub, so select the GitHub logo on the right, we actually see that these two are based on community. So Stack Overflow is um, the most famous Q&A website for developers. People can post questions or post answers to other people's questions and get some points based on the quality of the question and answers. <clears throat> so it's more about collaboration with other people. Uh, sorry. Uh, so it's more like about collaboration of the people, the interaction, and actually you can learn also by answering questions. And you can learn also by asking questions and get answer of like the, the pain point or like the, the element actually block you in the, when you write some, some code or, yeah. And GitHub is actually one of the leading open source uh, repository for, for developers. So it's also again, like people can post some code, you can get some code from other people and improve it. You can put some bugs, trying to uh, discuss together on how to solve it. So it's all about working together, trying to, to learning together, solving problems together and, and increasing skills and the overall yeah, knowledge database. So if you bring this to, uh, to learning in particular, <clears throat> it, you could have actually a group of people learning together, trying to solve problems together, and um, and oh yeah, there's I forgot to correct type. So there's typo. Uh, so learning together, trying to teach, solving problem together, and we just need to add a mentor. This is actually helping the, the community, actually guiding the community, more like a catalyzer and a guide to help also answer some questions from people. And actually, so this way you could actually boost motivation. You have like peer pressure from others because they need to finish, you need to finish. If you don't, then it's actually, in a way, it makes you look a bit bad. And this is how also, um, for example, if you take, there is an app called uh, Keep, right? Uh, a spot app called Keep. So you need to post in your social media, like you did uh, some exercise, some yoga, some running. And by doing that, actually it push you to, to motivate you to do it because other people would say, okay, oh, this guy is, is very sportive. And if you don't, like maybe it may, might, might make you look bad actually. And by also being in the community, so you try to solve problems together. So you add like some emotional connection to this because you are also together. You say, okay, I solved this with this person and you have more memories than just doing a, solving a problem yourself, which is in a, like in a cold environment. And so also you need to learn from, you learn from others and also you can teach to others. Some people may, might be blocked by some, some different aspect. You need to, to explain to them how to solve the problem. And actually by explaining, you will understanding better the, the concept and actually retain the knowledge and improve yourself way better. And overall also by, by being all this together and doing part self-study, part working together, you can actually lower the cost so it can make it a very suitable solution. Um, I also believe that this brings some long-term growth of uh, skill sets by two important elements. The first one is sort of the emotional connection. When you solve a problem, when you teach, you actually create 
yeah, some emotional uh, link to this particular particular knowledge. And this is actually how you can really retain some uh, some knowledge, like bringing this uh, this emotional connection. And the second aspect is that actually you are now part of a community. So in the long run, you can still connect with this community when you're blocked, sharing sharing things, and yeah, getting feedback. So just like the way Stack Overflow is working, but this is in a like a shorter shorter a smaller community, which might be more focused and more reactive actually. So the plus side, as you said, it's um, can bring actually help you to have long term growth. <clears throat> it's also push you to finish the bootcamp, finish the, the, the learning of the, the small aspect you have selected. And it can still add up to your needed speed because you have you are partly actually self learning. So if you want to go deeper, you can go. If you want to, to look at different concepts, you still have time to do it. Uh, provided you I mean you spend more time outside of the different sessions. And it can have also a low cost. <clears throat> and you have you get the support both from other um, mates like community members and from a, a mentor. Maybe the small two drawbacks is like you need uh, really here you need to be active because if you are you want like some passive uh, learning just like the way you would do in classes or trainings just here at the back of the class listening to the teacher this what this will not work. And so actually this also make it like the whole efficiency of this learning depends on the quality of the peers as well. If um, all of them are active, it can be actually tremendous, it can be really amazing. But if some are it's a bit passive or, or actually not playing the game, then it can uh, impact a little bit the teaching, the learning experience. So globally, I think it's um, very suitable for people who want to actively control the the way they learn and also want to develop in the long term while while um, connecting to a community of likewise people so there's actually some examples of community based learning so some is like you can find online uh, you can find actually some uh, coding clubs some coding clubs actually focusing on python as well uh, i don't know if there are any in china but at least in the us you have some there's also uh, <clears throat> A few years ago, I attended uh, some um, a cohort of something called the Weekly Python Exercise. It's done by a great, a great Python teacher called uh, Raven Lerner, was um, <coughs> was teaching all over the globe to uh, to top Fortune 500 companies, and he has done. This is actually the way he's doing it. Is every week he posts some kind of exercise focusing on different aspect of Python. Then so you have one week of solving the problem, then you can have access to uh, some forum where you can discuss with your peers, like uh, how to solve the problem, give some hints. Uh, you can also post your code, people can comment. Um, so you can improve also by looking at other people's code. And or like uh, the teacher, Raven Learner, is actually uh, also interacting with you, looking at your code, say, okay, this, maybe you could do this way better. And at the end of the week, is providing some very detailed solution of how to do it, why this way is better, what are maybe the pitfalls of these uh, particular problems. This is actually a great way to uh, to improve your Python, and actually I really enjoy what I, what I did there. It's like also connecting with other people. And uh, finally, of like Unpack AI, I think the whole Unpack AI has different uh, community-based learning approach this is actually why uh, I was really attracted in the first place to, to join this experience um, and this is what to try to do because also I, I believe and I think Ida also is believing in this way of, of teaching uh, okay so any questions yeah Jeff the, thanks so much for, for presentation so here is a um, QR code that you guys see now, if you will scan that, uh, you will land on the application form that doesn't only contain a Python course, but also AI and blockchain. And what I want to say by that, that essentially uh, we are building the platform where uh, there are communities 
around Python, blockchain, and AI, because like uh, we see that uh, right now you might be more attracted to Python because it's the tool that you might you might see as the way for you to automate maybe your Excel, right? Uh, to do some web scraping, or then maybe you are applying for the job and uh, you are considering to start tech journey. But then after the while, you might see that you know you need to learn AI, right? But then since you discovered already unpack AI and you connect it to people, you want to kind of keep, keep growing, right? And you don't want to switch from one uh, community to another community or from one, uh, let's say, um, like digital space, um, Slack, uh, then join to Discord and then to Facebook because just everything gets messy, right? You want to have like one experience where we can just quickly join skill, uh, one skill, another skill, you have some follow-up conversation in Python, follow-up conversation um, in AI, and then you might learn uh, at the same time AI and Python, and then maybe in two, three months, you got very curious about blockchain and you want to kind of like break into blockchain uh, space by understanding what's going on, but not necessarily like, you know, going too deep, too technical, right? Because you might be a very busy person and see like lots of our students are very busy business professionals who treasure their time and they're not really looking for the changing the job, but they want to understand how they can utilize technology at their at their work because they have some ideas uh, to work with uh, to, for example, bring um, um, executive management uh, at, uh, to convince them to put some money on the on the projects. Right. That can, there are so many reasons why people are learning without actually changing the job. And we kind of like see that uh, lear lifetime learning itself is becoming like one of the necessity uh, because because we, we all face the technological disruption. Technology is everywhere. It will not leave. So we kind of have to make sure that we uh, learn as fast as technology evolves, which is like very, very hard task. That's why we see that Unpack as the community can be the way to solve that issue for us. Okay, so if you guys are interested, please scan QR code. And also one more time, uh, on Sunday um, at 9 a.m. we'll have kickoff session for Python Bootcamp where Jeff will be a mentor for the next four uh, weeks. The session's twice a week. Um, we have a special promotion. So this month we're not requiring anyone to give up upfront payment, but we are requiring to give a deposit that you can refund at the end of the course okay and this uh deposit is the guarantee of your financial commitment we don't want to see you for example joining and then dropping out we want you to succeed that's why we are actually requiring the money from you but then you can get the money back and at the end of the course you will decide what's the value of the boot camp for you what's the value of the course for you based on uh, jeff performance based on the content based on the interactions we had with your uh with your students with your classmates right um so that's the the boot camp we have okay so it's very attractive it's only this month that's why if you guys are interested please don't miss all this opportunity and the sessions are twice a week um on monday Sorry, on Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. and on Saturday, 9 a.m. For more information, guys, if you need more details, um, I'm, I'm writing my WeChat. Actually, so, yeah, okay. a few more slides uh, to present, like the, the, the boot camp. Okay, okay, cool. Um, yes, please add me on WeChat if you have more details, and let's continue with, uh, with the presentation. First, is there any questions from anyone? Okay, no worries. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll just, just continue a bit, like presenting the, the bootcamp. So the solution would like to to address actually what I just talked about. Okay, just um, thanks. Um, community, so like kind of community learning. <clears throat> so I have the learner you as at the heart of the whole community and around you also will have like uh, courses there will be some challenge to, to practice so we'll do the challenge together 
will have a community of other students and a mentor or mentors to actually guide you and answer any of the questions you might have and uh, provide you some feedback on your code. So this by this community also it will um, bring some a bit peer pressure to push forward, keep the motivation, but while still having the flexibility of little group, we can still adapt based on some uh, some needs of people, <clears throat> and you can learn from from the others. So the, also the requirements are pretty small, so um, we don't need any knowledge in programming. Just need to have like a gross mindset, relatively good communication skills in English because it will be uh, done in English, and a bit time. So the time actually might depend on, yeah, you can spend more or less time depending on how deep you want. This is like an average, maybe one to two hours a day. Um, yeah, I think less than that, less than one hour a day on average will, uh, on, will not probably not be enough. Unless you can learn very fast. <clears throat> so like we said, to have two sessions, one is Tuesday and the other is uh, is a Sunday morning, so uh, Tuesday evening of Sunday morning, and it will be organized like this. So there will be some self-learning and practice for yeah, globally three days, three four days. Then there will be a session together when we'll actually recap the the core knowledge of the week, and then we'll do a challenge, one or several coding challenge together, <clears throat> together also with your um, your mates. I mean your bootcamp uh, teammates, and we'll repeat actually for um, yeah, learning for two three days, and then another session similar, just moving forward to the next uh, content. And all through the week, we'll have support for mentors, and this will last for four weeks. And at the end, there will actually be a small project, so we'll do some um, web parsing and to to uh, scrap some data. So getting some data from internet and creating a mini app uh, using Python. And the goal at the end is to be to have the basis to be relatively independent in Python to <clears throat> to actually make you uh, uh, able to actually continue learning by yourself and improving, yeah, basically all got, all got, uh, to get all the basis to learn by yourself. Okay. And that's it for me now. If you want to add something, Sounds here, Ida. Well, I really like the objective he put independence in Python. I see that uh, many of us who thinking about learning programming have the biggest fear. They think coding programming is super hard, and they don't have the brain to learn coding. And uh, this bootcamp is also the way to prove that you guys what, what you know about yourself is uh based on the wrong assumptions based on maybe like teachers in the school kind of like hurt your motivation or uh interest to learn math because like uh it's proven by science there is no such thing like uh, a math person everyone can learn math and every everyone can learn coding and moreover with python python is a very intuitive high level language um, it's very close to how people actually think. Of course, like you need to think using Python syntax, and that's the challenge. But if you, but if you know Python syntax, which more like you know, the more you type Python words, like Python syntax keywords, they're like that, that describe the function, the methods. The more like you think Pythonic, and then at some point you stop even uh, thinking that you actually uh, think Pythonic, like your ideas that you want to prototype, you want to automate, just comes naturally to you. It's like learning a uh, 10 finger uh, blind typing, right? It's the same way you can think about Python, just a bit of practice. Uh, and you can make it and you can be native to the computer, talk to the computer directly and be independent on creating some kind of powerful apps, uh, getting better job because like you will see more and more jobs will require technical knowledge Python, AI, okay, so you, you can be native to these technologies, and that will definitely change your life for better. Yeah, I, I really think like Python, actually I use it a lot of work uh, for work just to, um, 
automate some tasks it actually can make your life much more much more easy actually improve <clears throat> to improve your uh, work efficiency uh, automate tasks that are so boring to do like sometimes you need to do things 100 times and just you spend maybe 15 minutes just to automate it and can save you a lot of uh, hustle in the in the future so yeah i really believe it's um very nice language to have in your tool set toolkit sorry um so that's why i, tr I try to actually share it broadcast it and teach it to as many people as possible and um, yeah i just hope we can uh, achieve this goal cool um will be nice actually to get some feedback from from anyone uh share uh why you might want to learn python uh why you are here why you joined this event because like it's spring festival you might do something else what brought you here i guess it's kind of like the necessity the, the motivation necessity <laughs> uh the need to learn python maybe you can share if you start learning python before how was your learning experience maybe you can also share some cool resources the, the way you've been learning python and yeah like or maybe like if, if you didn't start learning python would actually stop you from learning python maybe you can also share that anyone is here uh free free feel to talk uh, please i have a question yes, i want to ask um, I want to ask um, the speaker the concerning the Python um, the bootcamp. Um, is it going to be um, precisely only Python um, training, or is it going to incorporate um, Python training with AI? Is it going to teach Python in general mm -hmm. or Python with with AI? So this one is uh, just Python. Okay. Yeah, but there is uh, yeah AI. AI yeah, would be in different uh, different courses actually, okay. with some very basic Python uh, Python elements also to help you. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a question from Sin. Uh, thanks by the way asking the uh, the question. iPad. <laughs> oh, we can know your real name. It'd be nice to know um, your real name. Abby. 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 Thanks, Abby, for joining. Thanks. Uh, Sin, please you raise your hand. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Okay, let me ask to un unmute. Sin, Sin. Yeah, then um, just fo uh, follow up with uh, with Abby. So we we have AI bootcamp, and we we actually take different approach there. We say you don't you don't need to have Python programming experience because we provide you even the code template which is actually python code but it's written with uh, uh the functions even like high level functions that wrappers and they put together as the pipeline that you can apply directly to your data so this is where we say you don't need to have python but then if you would like to tinker uh the pipeline if you would like to for example apply to your data where you have to do data cleaning pre-processing, right? This is where you should know Python, right? Um, that bootcamp, AI bootcamp is a nice way to break into AI if you want to understand technology practically, but if you would like to move on and actually um, work on the development of machine learning, you should you should still know Python on a very good level. So we can actually create the functions, we can create the, the, the code, uh, code the, the algorithm, like the, the logic there to connect the algorithm, the data algorithm, and the output. That's what you need. Hello. OK. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. very well. Yes. OK, uh, uh, good. Um, I, I just want to contribute to the discussion um, foremost. Uh, I would want to comment on um, the trainings and the the packages put together by Unpack AI. You know, I was one of the people that went through the uh, machine learning training, and um, um, when I started that training, I didn't um, believe that I could do anything um, uh, in machine learning or or AI because 
all the all the while it has all, all been like an abstract thing to me you know when you talk about um he high on machine learning and it's only just abstract but when i went through the course uh the patience of the teachers and um the the time that was put into it um made me learn a lot and um at the moment i could say that okay i have the uh, some basic knowledge of machine learning and AI. and um uh, i would want to suggest also or maybe just so to contribute to the teachers uh, while teaching uh, the python especially for beginners for those that do not have uh, any knowledge of programming at all because I could remember that one of the things that encouraged me while learning the uh, the machine learning um, uh, with unpacking AI was that the teachers and the tutors were so patient to explain the details, uh, the basics. Um, recently, I was I was with someone, uh, okay, who was not um, um, part of the unpack AI team. And I was asking some questions and the person was talking in some technical terms and I was like, whoa, calm down, cool down. I, I don't even have any knowledge of programming. I, I know nothing about programming. Uh, all the times you are, you are talking about, I don't even have an idea of what you are saying. So how do you expect me to get those things you, you are mentioning? And um, so I feel uh, the patience from the teachers uh, and how well they are able to pick it from the basics to actually explain it. Because, you know, the, the four or five weeks we, we spent during the machine learning, you know, we're just moving first week, second week, and um, before you know it, you you grab some things, you, when you study, you grab something, you're like, oh, this is actually uh, a lot easier than I thought. Uh, I felt it's going to be like um, uh, something so so uh, abstract that I couldn't, I couldn't understand anything, but then I could pick it up. So, it changed my orientation actually about um, um, uh, machine learning and programming. And um, it gave me some confidence also that, oh, whoa, I, ca I can learn Python then. If I can pick some little, little things from this, then if I'm patient enough, I, can, I could um, learn the syntax and um, the basis of, uh, of Python also. So I just want to uh, uh, commend and uh, recommend for that that um, the teachers should keep on being patient with the uh, students so that they could um, pick up the basics very well because once you get the basics then you can uh, build on that and uh, achieve more thanks yeah. that's a very good point there is a steep learning curve in everything right so you need to actually spend some time on the foundations really master foundations before going somewhere and that's actually also create the problem in learning like any tech skills, because like, uh, let's say you, you want to learn AI, right? Like we, do you start with linear algebra or do you start with statistics? Uh, do you start with Python, right? These questions is very hard to ask. That's why people think like, you know, what you should learn in AI to become like AI practitioner. Um, that's why we took actually approach of giving you the high level overview of what you can do with AI, uh, dirty way, brute force to kind of like, you know, bring uh, technology to solve some kind of like the problems with the data sets that you have. And that's that, that's a, what is the core of machine learning. But then like, of course, the, the, the foundations are still kind of like, you know, open, you need to you need to close them up step by step. But that's created uh, in you the independent thinker and the doer. So then you have like the knowledge to uh, to go and keep learning AI with the DL101. And this is what we also want to uh, encourage in you guys. If, after completing this course, you have the independence in learning Python in a more granular level, uh, like writing the classes, then write, building your own Python packages, and then like building your own software, and that's the core of the of, of the bootcamp to give you the independence. And the, I, I love this objective what, what Jeff wrote on the slide. Hmm. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. See, question see, from Shin. There's yes, a question from yes. Shin. Shin is back. Yes. Go ahead, Shin. Shin, if like you are unmuted, you can talk. 
We can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Adai. Hi, Jeff. Thank you for this um, talk. And uh, myself has always been interested in learning a programming language, for example, Python. And my question is regarding this bootcamp that, uh, you know, I've been studying, self-studied Python for uh, for several tries that I had uh, read through uh, the textbook, uh, mm -hmm. the self-taught uh, tutorials on Python. But my problem is that I think that I'm lacking the experience of uh, solving the real problems by using Python. So I'm not sure about how you guys are going to structure this Python bootcamp. And uh, uh, are you guys going to teach all the same materials or almost the same thing as the self-taught tutorials? Or are you going to weave into the lectures a lot of like the um, practical uh, uh, problem solving skills regarding the practical issues, things like that. And also how many students like learners have you already enrolled into the program and what are they, uh, you know, the average experiences is, is the good fit uh, for a person like my experience. So these are the basic uh, questions that I want to learn before I'm preparing myself to sign up for this uh, bootcamp. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, very interesting questions. Uh, so I will answer the, the, the first part of the questions and I will let Ida answer for the detail on the yeah. bootcamp students. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> basically, yeah, we'll um, do a mix of like, uh, like you say, like you call like a self self study content. So will be some online courses that will be structured in different ways. So we'll cut it into different chunks. We'll let a little bit of self-study, but we'll be here to answer any questions during this uh, self-study period. So uh, it's like uh, we have like two, three days to, to self-study. And then we have what's like one session just to to summarize actually what you just learned and maybe just develop a little bit beyond it's like, for example, why this is like that or um, answering some also maybe deep questions of the students. So we could live sessions. And then there will be some coding challenge. So during uh, thing around half, more than half an hour, half an hour to one hour, there will be like different uh, coding challenge. They're trying to solve together. And so at the end, we can do like some live coding. I can do some live coding on explaining, okay, how how you, you proceed, how you analyze the problem, how you solve the problem and uh, and different way, like uh, how you, you code basically the the problem to the to the challenge and so at the end also we'll do a yeah like real project so like how to to get data from internet and how to develop some 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 apps so this is like actually kind of really a real use actually of, of python skills you just acquired mm -hmm. okay and also i would like to jump in now you don't need to prepare for Python bootcamp to study Python, you you asked the question at the end, like do, do you need to do some self study? You need to kind of like work on the practical challenges to join the the Python bootcamp. Actually, this bootcamp is beginner friendly. We take people with the zero knowledge in Python and get them to the level they can actually work uh, on some like mini Python projects by reading the documentation, kind of unlocking their um, self-independent uh, development skills of course that doesn't mean that you can blindly uh, code like there is no I don't know any uh, web developer that can blindly code and create the apps it's all about having on one side documentation and lots of tabs open uh, on your Chrome on the other side you have like your editor and you kind of like 
always speak uh, in, on, into the documentation, then find the right point, and then like get back to your editor and writing the code, and then lots of testing. I think like Jeff has more experience, uh, definitely have more experience in, in saying how like you know web developer works or like any software developer works, and it's all about reading uh, nonstop. But again, like that's what we want to teach you in the bootcamp, so then you can be independent. Uh, maker, of course, you need to learn on the way, but at least like you'll be able to do that. So you won't be like the person who thinks, "Oh, Python is not for me; it's too technical, it's too challenging." Actually, you'll you'll love Python after this bootcamp. Hmm. And yeah, because you're also already learned by yourself for yeah, different bits, so you can also adapt. The fact that we are actually, let's say, a relatively small cohort, so there will be. So I don't know how many students we have. I forgot like. Currently, but there will be. We, we have time. five uh, five sign up full sign ups already, um, and we we can accept up to seven because we want to have twelve. That's the goal. But in 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 any case, it will be less. It will be better for you guys. So we we have spots left. So please join. Yeah. So it could be yeah flexible, and if we see maybe one student is a bit like. A, a bit more advanced than others, we can actually provide some maybe more challenging or like some content to go actually deeper and actually provide more value. And I can still, yeah, I can still help and answer more deep questions. Mm -hmm. So to accommodate to the difference of level if there is you know, some gap between different students. Okay, great. Thank you guys. And uh, please keep me posted on, you know, the number of us learners in row and um, that mm -hmm. uh, we try just, you know to just one, one more time we, we actually start on sunday this sunday in two days Oops. already okay. right so um if, if you join you can join now the cost about the cost so we require yeah. you to give the learning pledge so this is refundable deposit this is your financial commitment the cost of that is 1,900 RMB, but at the end of the course, you can return the money if you successfully complete all the assignments, you show up for the live sessions, you are a good student essentially, right? There is no like strict requirements, more about like being engaged, being a good student. But then if you can, you can get the money back, but then like you will evaluate what's the value of the bootcamp for you. If you if you think like the value was the the cost of the learning pledge, you can leave the money with us. If you say okay, I see like you know like um, I see the value is around one thousand RMB, then you can pay one thousand RMB of or you can you can just go for any amount that you think is is worth of your experience in the course. And that's the promotion we have only for this month because we want to see how the learning pledge affecting the completion rate. The, the effectiveness, the performance of our students, because we've been teaching already training programs for for a year. We've done more than 20 training programs uh, in total. So we want to we want to see how we can actually provide more value for people in education space and possibly disrupt that because like innovation education is very slow. But I think like education is is very kind of like traditional and cannot uh, cope with the pace of the technology. Um, disruption right innovation so we want to see that education is able to have the same speed and and give the opportunity for people to learn as quick as technology evolves okay great uh Ara, thank you and how long will bootcamp lasts uh four weeks it will be four weeks okay. starting from uh, okay. uh, from sunday i got you thank you thank you Any other question? Almost at the end of the hour. No. Okay, so we have the questions actually in, in chat box. Oh. Um, so here's my WeChat. It's my phone number. Because we're all on WeChat, add me on WeChat and I will uh, process your registration. Okay, we have uh, two days left before the start of the bootcamp. Uh, again, the, the sessions will be um, on uh, Tuesday evening, 7.30 p.m., and on Sunday morning, 9 a.m., uh, for the next four weeks. 
right? And the content, the knowledge, everything will be provided by Jeff. We'll have exclusive for students which at group. Then after completion, we'll add you to the bigger alumni group with all the unpack AI, uh, AI machine learning, blockchain graduates where you can interact with, okay, and have the connection, um, have the opportunity to ask any questions that we always answer them, right? Because like we're technical experts and you might work on your project and you want to have some kind of like uh, assessment. We provide you also assessment, but not like, you know, like uh, uh, guidance through the project, more like, you know, help you out sometimes with the code or some like if you have any questions. Yeah. Um, so about them, yes? I want to ask you, um, on Sunday, is it the AI bootcamp or the Python bootcamp? It's okay, Python. so we, Python. yeah, that's Python. Python. Python on Sunday, okay, and, oh. yeah, okay, so we talk about Python today, okay, we, for AI, you can reach me out uh, separately, okay, so talk about the Python, Python again, Sunday, 9 a.m. and Tuesday, 7.30 p.m., okay, oh. and the payment, uh, yeah, the, the payment, uh, talk to me in person about the payment for way. Okay, I will process the payments. Okay. Mm. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, either like some, some people said like there's a uh, small problem with uh, the, when they scan the QR code. Like WeChat says actually the website is blocked. Interesting. So, yeah, so I think we can maybe contact direct. Yeah, contact maybe direct. your table is not accessible anymore in China. Mm. Oh no, I think it's fine for me. I just scanned. Yeah, so I just can, scanned. Yeah, you can contact uh, IDAR directly. Just contact me directly. Uh, yeah. yeah. The WeChat, the phone number is here. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Or, All right, guys. Uh, two minutes before before nine. I think it was a very lovely discussion. Thanks, guys, for jumping uh, for you. for the questions, asking. We love engagement. Also, we have the WeChat group. Uh, for Python exclusive, the bigger the bigger group where also Jeff is there to ask the, uh, to to answer the questions, but for the bootcamp we we'll have exclusive group where Jeff will put his mentorship hours. Okay, so he's also going to give at least ten hours a week. So he'll he'll give lots of time. We'll check your code. We'll, we'll provide you the guidance. I'll be also around to to make sure that you have amazing learning experience. Thanks, Jeff, so much again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. All right, everyone, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, have a lovely evening. Um, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.